Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. So a while ago I made this scene right here and I posted on Instagram and a lot of people were asking me how did I make this kind of like chopping effect? Did I use um, rigid body? Did I use physics? And I'm going to be showing you how I did it. I actually just did animation and there's no physics or simulations in this whatsoever. So we're not going to be making this whole tutorial that you see here of the conveyor belt and everything, but we will be making this, this what you see here. So I'm going to be going through how I did this whole chopping effect animation and how to set all that up and I will quickly set up a camera and do some basic lightings and show you how to export a video but this is not really what this tutorial is about this is primarily about how to make this chopping effect in Blender 2.8 and um, yeah if you guys want to check me out on Patreon I do put a lot of assets on there and Patreon exclusive tutorials so if you haven't checked me out on Patreon before just go ahead that's in the description below you guys can check that out it's a great way to support the channel I do appreciate it so okay so the new scene open up in Blender I'm using Blender 2.83 alpha go ahead select your default cube and then um, tab into edit mode and we're going to go G Z and holding in control we're going to move this guy up so it snaps to our grid floor okay so let me do that from a front orthographic view so you guys can see G Z hold in control and bring it up and it'll snap to the floor here. Just like that. Okay, that's good. Let's go into your front orthographic view again. Go S, X, 0.25 and hit enter. And then we want to go S, Y. And it doesn't really matter how thick the Y is. You can make it whatever you want. So I'm just going to go with something like this. So as long as from the front, it is this kind of thickness. Then we're going to go Control R to add in a loop cut in the middle. Then we're going to hit V, right click to let go. And then in our front view, we're going to select the vertices on the left side of our screen. Go Control L. That's going to select all of this geometry. And we're going to go X and then delete those faces. Then holding in Shift and Alt, we're going to loop select these vertices and then hit F to fill them in. Then we're going to go Control R and roll in some geometry here, some loops. Double click and then Control R and roll your middle mouse wheel and add in some geometry. So, just so it can deform and Control R, you can add in two loops over here. It doesn't have to be exact number of loops as long as it's got some geometry we can deform. Then we want to go into our front orthographic view, hit Z, go into a wireframe. Then we're going to box select these front vertices and then go E, S and scale them in and then S, Y and scale them in on the Y a little bit. And let's go to our materials and by default it has a material already because it's our default cube. So let's just go and hit this little plus, add another material and go new and assign it. And so we can see it's actually applied. Let's go down to our viewport display and just make it blue or red or whatever. Okay, so there we have it. And we can also come to our modifiers, add in a mirror modifier. And if you see, we disable it, we have these two parts. So let's just disable it for now, tab back into edit mode. And what we wanna do is holding in shift, so select this guy and then hold in shift and control and then click here. And holding in shift, select this guy. And we're just going around and selecting all of these edges of our box here, except the ones in the front. So just going around and selecting this one, very easy to do. So just shift and control. Okay, so you can see here I've selected these guys, except the ones on the front faces. And then I'm going to go control B and I'm going to add in a bevel and roll the middle mouse wheel to add in some detail like that. And then I'll tab out of edit mode. And if I en this enable my mirror modifier, you can see it, you don't see the inside, but you will eventually when we animate it. So let's go to object and also enable shade smooth. And you're gonna get this messy geometry here in the middle, but an easy way to fix that is to go to your modifiers and then go down and add an, an edge split. And that'll fix that up. So under your mirror mo modifier, you have an edge split. Okay, so let's add in our armature. So I'm gonna go shift A, go to my armature, add in a single bone. Then I'm gonna hit Z, go into my wireframe. Then I'm going to go into my edit mode and I'm going to select this bone, go shift D X and move this guy here to the bottom corner of this um, square or this Q um, rectangle. And I can grab this top nub and just go G Z and just bring it down to make it a bit smaller and then select this guy and then holding in shift, select the big one, then go control P and make parent to keep offset. So now this little guy is parented to this one. And now if we go out of back into object mode, we're going to select this guy, holding and shift, select our armature, then go into pose mode, and then we're going to click on this little guy and go control P, and we're going to make set parent to bone. 
Okay, so now let's go back into object mode. Uh, yep. And then we want to grab this um, um, rectangle here, or this thing we're going to be cutting in half. And we want to go to our mirror, open this up, and then we're going to go to mirror object, and we want to select our armature. So now our mirror pivot point is going to be this armature. So now if we grab this armature and we go into our pose mode, and if you were to rotate this bone, you'd see that it's going to be mirrored on the other side, which is exactly what we want. So let's just go back into our object mode. And before we do our animation, one thing we can do is also grab this guy and then go to our object, um, pro object data property properties and then go to our shape keys, add in a plus. So that's going to create a basis and then we're going to hit plus one more time. That's going to create our first shape key. Drag that value up to one and then tab into edit mode. And what we want to do is loop select these vertices here like that and then enable proportional editing. In your front view, go G, X and just scale them out a little bit like that. Just to bend it out. And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to also animate this shape key here because having it bend out like that as it falls is going to make it look a little bit more jelly-like, a little bit more um, less rigid, which is, it just makes the animation a little bit more satisfying. So let's just bring this value here down to zero. Okay, so that's really good. So let's add in our blade that's going to come down and slice this. So let's go shift A, go to our mesh options, add in a cube. Go to your front view, go S, X, and just scale this guy down along the X till it's very skinny and go G, Z, bring it up. And tab into edit mode, and what we're going to do is grab these bottom vertices and go SX and scale them in even more. So we have what looks like a really sharp blade, and this thing's going to come down and cut this thing, and it's going to fall open. So let's go Shift A, add in a plane, and just scale it up, and this is going to be our floor. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I think we can now get into our animation. Um, and then once we've done that, we could add some materials as well. Okay, so let's do our animation. I'm going to hit Z to go to my wireframe. They're going to grab my armature. With your armature selected, we're going to go into our pose mode. And we're going to select this little bone here. Then go into our front orthographic. And let's open up our timeline here. And make sure we're on frame 1. On the not frame 1, frame 10. And on frame 10, we're going to go I, insert a rotation keyframe. And then hit I and insert a location keyframe. Then we're going to go to frame 24, drag the slider to frame 24. Then we're going to go R and just rotate this guy out like so. And then go I and insert a rotation. And I insert a location. And we can also go G, X and just move this one in a little bit. And go I, just insert a location. So let's just have a look at that. It's going to go like that. Yep, that's good. And then we're going to drag this to frame 40. And on frame 40, we're going to go R. Rotate this guy so it looks like it's laying flat. And then we're going to go G, X, and move it in a little bit. Then we're going to go I, insert a location, and then I, insert a rotation. Then we're going to grab this frame, just select this keyframe here and go Shift D. And we're going to move it up to um, frame 50. And then we'll go back to frame 40. And on frame 40, we want to hit our right arrow key and move up three frames. So hit your right arrow key three, three times, move up three frames. And then we're going to go R and rotate this guy up just a tiny little bit and go I and insert a rotation. So let's have a look at that. So it doesn't just come to a complete stop when it falls. It just kind of has this a little bit of a bounce. And it's just going to make it look a little bit more physically accurate. So let's have a look at that. Okay. Let's have a look. Okay, that looks good. So now what we're going to do to make it look like it's actually not something that's rigid but something that's soft is to go back into object mode. Then we're going to grab this guy here and what we want to do is go to our object data properties, go to key 1 and let's go to frame 10 where this all starts. And in frame 10 we're going to come to this value here and we're going to hit I to insert a keyframe on a value of 0. And then what we're going to do is it's falling, we're going to come to about frame 22 and then we're going to increase this value here all the way to 1 and hit I. So let's have a look at that, like that. And then on frame 20, frame 40, we're gonna come and bring this value all the way up down to zero again and hit I. So let's have a look at that. Okay. 
Now what you can do, if that isn't enough, you can always come to frame 10, just tap into edit mode. And with that key one selected, we can move these vertices out even more if you wanted to make it a little bit more um, extreme. I might do that. So just mess around with that. So let's see what that looks like. And slam. And let's make the frames here 90 frames and just hit enter. So our animation doesn't have to be that long. Okay. That looks really good. So now let's animate our blade here. So let's go to frame 10. Okay. And on frame 10, we, okay, let's go back a few frames. So let's go back three frames. So let's go back to frame seven. And on frame seven, we're gonna go I and insert a location key. And then we're gonna move up to frame 10 because this is gonna happen really quickly. And on frame 10, we're gonna go, um, okay, maybe frame 11. So move up to frame 11, we're gonna go G Z and bring this guy down so it's touching the floor. So if we go to wireframe, just so it's just touching the floor, and then we're gonna go I and insert a location. And then we're gonna to go to frame 20. And on frame 20, we're gonna go G, Z and bring it up, and go I and insert a location. And if you want it to come up to the exact same place it was, one way you can do that is just select the first key we inserted, then go Shift D and drag it to frame 20. So it'll be in the exact same spot. If you wanted to start and end in the same place. So let's have a look at that. Okay, and we could probably make the end frames here something like 70. We don't need that many frames. Okay, and that is our chop here. So let's add in a camera. So I'm just gonna come over here, go shift A, add in a camera. Go to my camera view, G, middle mouse wheel, pull back. Just get a camera angle that I like and go here, make it something like orthographic. Go to my camera settings here and I'm gonna make the Y value 1920 as well. So it's oh, 1920, so it's a square aspect ratio. And just get a view that I like, scale this floor up. So let's have a look at that. Ah, that's looking pretty cool. So let's give some lights and materials here. So I'm just gonna to go to my render settings, make sure it's an EV. Enable, enable ambient occlusion and screen size reflections. Then go Shift A, we're gonna add in an a light. So go to your light, add in an every light. G, Z, bring this light up. Go to your light settings, bring the size up. And just increase this power to whatever you want. So if you go to your camera view and hit Z, you go rendered. You can look at that. So let's make it, okay, 600, that's good. Rotate it a little bit. This isn't really a lighting and materials tutorial. I'm just doing this as an extra thing. Yeah, and then you can go ahead and give this guy, um, you know, make the materials whatever you want. Make the inside material something. So if you play it, you can make something in that inside material. Um, completely up to you, you know. Use your imagination. Give the floor a color. I'm not gonna do any kind of specific color palette. Just totally up to you guys. Um, yeah, and you can make this blade like a metal material. Make it dark, I don't know. Just be creative, make it whatever you want. And um, if you wanna render this out, what you can do is go to your output settings here and then click on this little folder here, go to your desktop or wherever, hit accept. And then what you can do is come and make this um, FFmpeg over here, go to encoding, make the container type an mp4 peg, and put the output, output quality to perceptually lossless. So if you go render, you go render animation, it'll render this animation out. So I know I didn't add a lot of details to the lighting and stuff like that in the materials, but this is more of just how to do this kind of scene. So there it is. If you guys like this, hit a like and subscribe. Check out some other content. If you guys want more tutorials and content and assets, you can go look at my Patreon page if you guys are interested in that. So I'll see you guys later for another tutorial. And um, yeah.